Hey YouTube, it's IC, and today I'm going to show you guys how to install and use Siri or Spire on the iPhone 4, iPhone 3GS, iPad 2, the original iPad, and the iPod Touch 4th generation, and even the iPod Touch 3rd generation if you have an external microphone. And just the microphone on the headphones will do fine. But for those of you that don't know, Spire was actually released by Chapone, and it is his Siri port for older iDevices, and it does actually require that you go through a server and most of the servers are paid and actually all of the good servers are paid so I'm going to show you guys which server I recommend and this is actually the only server that I do recommend using with Siri or Spire so first of all you will need to get Spire and I'm going to show you guys that after a quick demonstration I do have an iPad 2 here and you do notice that it does have a camera and it also has a slimmer design than the original iPad. So you know this is an iPad too. So I'm going to activate Siri by holding down the home button. Hello Siri. All right, so that was just a quick test on the iPad there. And on the iPod Touch fourth generation, I'm gonna do the same thing. Hello. Greetings, Tanner. Okay, so you do know that it does work on both of these older devices here, and I'm just going to show you guys First, what you have to do with the iPad 2 or the original iPad because it's somewhat different than how you have to do it with the iPhone 4, iPhone 3GS, and the iPod Touch 4th generation and even the 3rd generation iPod Touch. So first, you will need to be jailbroken, obviously, and if you aren't already jailbroken, I will have links to my jailbreak videos down below in the more info, and once you are jailbroken on your older iDevice, you can come back to this video, check out Spire, and actually install it on your device. So so we do have Cydia loaded up here and what you're going to need to do iPad users only is go to the sources tab at the bottom and you're going to have to add a source. Now this source is actually iHacksRepo.com so just add that in there. Again that's iHacksRepo.com and I will have that on the post that's down below in the more info so just check out the post and it will have the repo there. So once you have iHacksRepo added then all you have to do is go to the search tab and search for spire that's s-p-i-r-e once you search for it you will have to get spire for ipad dash ipad 2 and that is from the ihacks repo now once you've installed it you will have to reboot and please note that it will take a while to actually install because it has to set up the cache files and then once it does install you can actually reboot your device come back to this and then you will have to install something else and that is Siri fix and just type that in and you should find it it's iPad Siri fix from the iHacks repo and once you install this, it will install three applications. Now you will notice here that I have clock, calculator, and weather on my iPad. And that is because of this Siri fix from the iHacks repo. And it also changes the background from black to the actual regular Siri background that you see on the iPhone 4S. So before you actually install this tweak, you will notice that you have a black background. Once you install this, it will fix that. And then on top of that, you're going to have to install something called Belfry. And I actually did make a video on this. It's B-E-L-F-R-Y. Once you go to it, simply install it. And again, all of these instructions will be on the post that's down below. And the reason why you have to install this is because it installs stocks. So you will have the stocks application once you install it, because if you ask Siri anything related to stocks, it will crash. And then once you have Belfry installed, it won't crash anymore and it will actually be able to answer your questions about stocks. Now Belfry actually installs six applications that are native to the iPhone that aren't on the iPad. And that also includes clock, calculator, and weather, which as I mentioned, the Siri fix from the iHacks repo installs. This installs it too, Belfry, but again, like I said, you're going to have to install both of them because otherwise you will have a black Siri background, and I'm sure most of you do not want that. You want the official one that's on the iPhone 4S. So once you install both of those, you will have six new applications, and Siri will be working just fine. Now to actually initiate Siri, what you have to do is 
download, like I said, Spire, and then simply go into the settings application. And then inside of the settings app, simply scroll down to Spire underneath extensions. And once you go to Spire, you're going to have to put in the IP address of the server that you did purchase access to. And like I said, I'm going to talk about that in just a second. I'm not actually going to go to it because that's the only thing you have to do is put in that IP address. And like I said, I'm not going to go to it because that will reveal the IP address for the server that I purchased access to. So once you actually install Spire, all you have to do is put in that IP address. It's a good idea to reboot after you put it in so that you know it works. And then what you have to do is go inside of settings, general, Siri, and turn it on because it will not be on by default. And most of you will get frustrated if you're holding down the home button and nothing is happening when you're trying to use Siri with Spire. So just keep in mind that you have to come back here to the settings, general Siri, and activate Siri. Now, you will also have to install a certificate from whoever you purchase server access from, and that's extremely easy. They should provide instructions for that. So now I'm just going to show you on the iPod Touches and on the iPhones, all you have to do is go inside of Cydia and you just have to search for Spire. Now this is from the Big Boss repository, so there is no need to add an additional repo or source. All you have to do is load Cydia, and once it is loaded, just go to the search tab at the bottom and in the search field type inspire s-p-i-r-e and then hit enter and it should come up here once it finishes. But the reason why you have to add it on the iPad is because the Spire version from Chapone does not fully support the iPad and the iPad 2. So again, that's why you have to get it from the iHacks repo. But like I said, if you're on an iPod Touch or an iPhone, just get it from the Big Boss repository. Once you've found it, hit install, confirm, and it will take a while to actually install it again because of what it has to cache to go through the install process. But that's all you have to do for the iPhone 4, iPhone 3GS, iPod Touch 4th and 3rd generation is just install Spire, put in your IP address, install the certificate from whoever you purchased the server access from, and you will be good to go and you will be able to use Siri or Spire on your device. It's not like the iPad 2, you don't have to install those extra things. You can just use Siri or Spire. So now what I'm going to do is just go inside of Safari and show you guys who I recommend purchasing server access from. Now their website is siriservers.com and all you have to do is come over to their website and you just purchase access to the server. It's a one-time fee of $45 for one device and it's an additional $20 per device and you just add that on to your initial payment and then you will be able to use it across multiple devices. Now $45 for lifetime access is actually the best deal that I've seen so far for access to a server to run Spire. And keep in mind that if you do actually purchase access to a server, it will be much more secure than any other server that you can find for free. And that's because they have an extra layer of security that they add on. They have more support. They actually do things faster. The servers are more responsive because they have the resources to actually beef up their servers and to actually add more iPhone 4S keys to the servers. And that's another benefit of going with these guys they're constantly dumping keys into the server so that you get the fastest possible access to Siri. Now, once you do purchase it, they will send you an address and you can go to it inside of Safari and you can get information on the server and you can see how much traffic the server is actually handling right now. As you can see right here, you get a little box and it says the server status is on. There are three available iPhone 4S keys that are shared amongst all of the people who are actually on the server and there are 30 active connections, which means there are currently 30 people trying to use Siri with their server, and it says it's throttling at 50 connections per key, so that's perfect. We only have 30 connections total and three available keys. And like I said, these guys just know how to do things. Their website is siriservers.com. And again, I'll have a link to that down below in the more info. And I'll also have links to the developer's Twitter accounts. So you guys should definitely use them if you're thinking about getting Spire on your older iDevice and actually purchasing access to a server. And by the way, what they mean by lifetime access is the lifetime of the server. So basically until they have to take the server down. And that's not necessarily going to happen, but in case there are legal complications, it's stated 
stated in their terms when you do actually purchase access to the server that they have the ability to cancel your lifetime access to the server at any given time. But again, that's only if Apple says using Spire and setting up Spire servers is illegal. So until Apple actually does something about it or until the server goes down for legal reasons, and that's gonna be the same no matter which server you guys purchase access to. But now that I've got all of that out of the way, I'm going to give you guys a couple more demonstrations of Siri running on the iPad 2 and the iPad Touch 4th generation before wrapping up this video. What's Apple's stock? Apple closed at four hundred fifty-six dollars and forty-eight cents today. All right, as you can see, it does give a graphic here, and it's kind of cut off on the side, but that is one of the limitations of having a port running on the iPad as opposed to on the iPod Touch or even the iPhone. It isn't exactly the perfect resolution, so they have to change things around. But it does work. I'm gonna give you guys another demonstration. Set an alarm for 10 minutes from now. All right, so as you can see, it did set an alarm for 10 minutes from now. It actually did work. I was somewhat surprised because I thought it wouldn't work unless you actually set a specific time. But again, it did work. And as you can see, I'm going to lift up the iPad here. Uh, in the top corner there, it does have the icon for the alarm. So you do know that it did set the alarm. I'm actually going to turn off the alarm and you will notice that that icon up there by the battery percentage does go away. So let's turn it off now. As you can see, it did disappear. So you do know that Siri does work. The only limitation with it on the iPad is that it messes up if you go into landscape mode. But other than that, like I said, everything works perfectly and you can even install extensions to Siri from Cydia with different things like Siri mic colors, assistant extensions, voice utils, Siri toggles, basically just anything you can get from Cydia that modifies Siri. All right, now I'm just going to do one more on the iPad before jumping on over to the iPod Touch here and that's just demonstrating that the calculator function of Siri works. What's 878 plus 994 minus 3? All right, okay, so there we go. It did give the proper answer using Wolfram. As you can see here, it did dictate it correctly and it did give the proper answer. I'm trying to get rid of the glare there. So I'll zoom in. And the answer according to Wolfram is 1869. All right, so now let's actually go on over to the iPod Touch here using Spire. Hello. Hello, Tanner. Okay, so that works. Let's actually check the weather for Santa Monica. What's the weather like in Santa Monica, California? Here's the forecast for Santa Monica, California today through this Sunday. So you do know that the weather function works. Let's get a stock quote now. What's the stock price for Google? Google closed at five hundred eighty dollars and eleven cents today. So as you can see, it does look much better than the stock portion of Siri on the iPad because again, it is running at a native resolution on the iPod Touch here as opposed to a non-native resolution on the iPad. So let's just do two more. The first one, I'll just prove to you guys that calculations work with Siri. What's 893 plus 436 minus 987 times 12? As you can see, the interface lags a tad bit on the A4 processor here on the iPod Touch 4th generation, but not by much, and it does still work properly, and the responses are extremely fast. Now I'm just going to show you guys searching the web with Siri. 
search the web for Apple. All right, so as you guys can see, it did bring up Safari here and it did search for Apple. So I hope you guys like this video. Just keep in mind that you do have to pay for access to a Siri server that's any good, that does have a layer of security. And also keep in mind when you do have access to one of those more reliable servers, they cannot see what you are dictating as long as they have the proper security implementations. And that's actually the main reason why I like SiriServers.com because they cannot see what you're dictating through Spire. And remember, if this video helped you, please rate it up. If you have any comments, leave them down below in the comment section, and be sure to hit that subscribe button if you aren't already subscribed. And until next time, this is ICU, signing out.